Silver! Away! A fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi yo, Silver! The Lone Ranger. Cattle raising was the first great industry in the western United States, but when the days of the open range passed, many farmers emigrated to the new territory. There were endless disputes between the ranchers and these newcomers, and the disputes might have led to open warfare if it had not been for the masked rider of the plains. It was he who convinced the old-timers there was room for everyone, and that only through the honest cooperation of all honest men and women that the winning of the West could be accomplished. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for Jones Creek! Hi, old Silver! Away! <laughs> As old Abby Salem listened to the rat-faced man who stood in her parlor, her lips narrowed grimly, and her eyes began to spark with anger. Who sent you here? Why, ma'am, didn't I tell you that afore? I work for Caleb Chandler. Maybe you've heard of him. His place is just beyond the Pecos. What's he want with that land at the head of the valley? Well, you see, he's got to move. Where he is, he's been leasing, and now he can't get the lease renewed. He's already bought the Davis place just east of here, and aims to get settled on it before fall. But he's got to have more summer rain. Now, there's good grass at the head of the valley there, and if he can buy, it'll suit him fine. Well, you've come to the wrong place. I can't do nothing about it. I uh, reckon you ain't understood me, ma'am. No? When I first come here, I heard you'd sold that property to a bunch of settlers. I've already talked to them. Well? Uh, they won't sell. They won't even talk about selling. Then that ought to finish it. Not less than you say it does, ma'am. What have I got to do with it? Well, in talking to them, I learned they ain't rightly got title to that land yet. They paid you half down when they moved in and promised to pay the other half at the end of a year. That'll be about a month from now. Go on. What occurred to me, ma'am, was that you could uh, fix it so they'd clear out without paying that last half. And then the land would revert to you, and you'd be free to sell it to me. Oh, I could, huh? And just how would I go about doing all this? <laughs> They're using Jones Creek for irrigating, ain't they? They are. And the creek's on your land, ain't it? It is. I understand you give them permission for it. But I found out that permission weren't never given in writing. <laughs> so... So I'm to tell them they can't take no more water. Is that it? Just so. Well, that'd be real slick, wouldn't it? I could keep the cash they'd already paid me, besides banking what I'd get for selling the land all over again. <laughs> Ma'am, I knew the minute I laid eyes on you that you was a smartin. You're the kind I like to do business with. I reckon we Just can... a second. Yeah? You said your name was Mason. That's it, ma'am. Well, Mr. Mason, I'm a lady. Leastways, I wear skirts. So I ain't privileged to put in words the things I'm thinking. Huh? And at my age, I wouldn't try to give you the larrapin you deserve. Though 40 years ago, I'd have handled two like you without even making work of it. Say now. But I still got a voice to holler with, and I can use it. 
Either you may track straight out of here, or I yell for the boys and tell them to give you what for. Now, by thunder, you get... Oh, but listen... Get... I, I... All right, you ask for it. I... No, 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 don't holler. I'm a-going. You just better. I'm a-leaving. Don't you ever come back. But before I go, I'll tell you something, ma'am. You're leaving. What's wrong with you is you're too doggone old to have good sense. I never heard anybody Hey like there. Huh? Uh, what do you want? I heard you inside there, mister. I was in the kitchen. When I seen you leave and I hurried around to catch you before you left. Oh, you did, huh? What for? Don't know who I am, do you? Now, look here, young fella. I wouldn't care if you was the governor of this here state. I'm in a hurry. My I'm... name's Frank Salem. I don't Old see. Abby's my grandma. Oh, you're taking objection to what I said to her, huh? Well, mister, you Don't can... get in such a hurry. You got me all wrong. Huh? Would it uh, be worth anything to you if maybe I was to fix it so you could buy that land? You mean... I asked you a question. Would it be worth anything to you or wouldn't it? Young fella, it'd be worth plenty. <laughs> I thought so. Uh, what do you have here? Mason, you and me can talk business, but this ain't the place for it. Get aboard your horse and ride slow down the trail. I'll saddle and catch up with you in just a few minutes. <laughs> Two days later, a masked man and an Indian, mounted upon powerful stallions, held their horses motionless at the rear of a small cabin. A broad-shouldered man of late middle age looked at them with curiosity. You know, I can't figure you fellas out. You, for instance, you're masked. But instead of taking what grub you need at the point of a gun, you offer to pay for it like anybody else. Ain't that a kind of funny way for a crook to act? But we're not crooks, then. Yeah, and that's the second time you've called me by name. We ain't never met before, have we? No. And how come you know it? We'd heard about you. I understand it was your idea that this spot here at the head of the valley would make good farming land. Well, I guess you could say it was my idea as much as anyone's. Anyhow, it was me that talked to old Abby into selling us this land on time. I'm not sure you made a good choice. No? And dry farming wouldn't pay here. You're getting water from Jones Creek, but there are plenty of seasons when there's no water in it. What'll you do then? You mean to say sometimes the creek dries up? I know it does. Tonto and I have been through this part of the country often. For the past two years... It's it... run full, I know. But next year, as likely as not, it won't. Maybe for several years in a row. Oh, say now, I don't know as I believe that. It's true, nevertheless. You wouldn't be working for a fellow named Mason, would you? Mason? Who's he? Oh, never mind. You wouldn't admit it if you was. Oh, here comes Cynthia with your grub. Well, I said you could have it, and you paid, so I won't go back in my word. But so be it, if you are working for a mason, I'd advise you to steer clear of here in the future. But, Dan, listen. Here it is, Pa. Thanks, honey. Well, it's all done up for you, stranger. Fine. Time to put it in your saddlebag. Uh, and, Dan, huh? whoever this mason is, you can take my word for it. We are not in his hire. We... Who's that? Pa, it's Frank Salem. Well, so it is. Looks like him and that other fellow rounded up a couple of strays. Stranger, if you want to stay out of sight, you and the engine can round the cabin. We're not running from anyone. I think they've seen my mask already. Well, suit yourself. Hi there, Frank. Where'd you find them critters? Don't let them get away from you, Slim. They won't. Yeah. Well, which one of you was it, Reynolds? You or did you get this mask fella here to do it for you? Huh? What are you talking about, Frank? You know as well as I do. So I'll give you a warning. The next time you hanker after beef, pay for it. We ain't raising cows for farmers to steal off us. Why, well, doggone, Frank. You surely ain't saying I tried to steal them cows, are you? Look Why, at them ropes around their necks. You figure we put them there? Why, what? Reynolds, we found the place where you caught our fence and let those critters out. We picked up your trail and followed it. You know where it took us? To that grove of yours back there. We found these steers tied up, out of sight. Tied by the ropes you're looking at. Hey, now, just But a... you forgot one thing. You forgot that cowmen can read signs. I guess being a farmer, you didn't think of that, huh? It's not true. How dare you say we'd steal? I ain't gonna argue about this. I'm just serving warning, like I said. I'd advise you not to forget it. Look here, Frank. I'll swear. I never hey, had don't a... Don't waste your breath. Ranger? Well? I suppose if you was willing to give your name, you wouldn't be wearing that mask. But I reckon you ought to be warned, too. Yes? Crooks don't last long around this neck of the woods. Just keep that in mind. Perhaps you'd like to do something about it now. Nope. A warning ought to do if you got sense. Come on, Slim. We gotta get these critters back. Get up, boy. Get up, boy. Get up. Well, if get that up. don't yeah. beat all. Oh, how could those cows gotten in our grove? Oh, going to I know. But I sure hate to have old Abby think we're stealing from her after her being so good to us. Dan. Yeah? Maybe Tonto and I can find out for you. Huh? Those fellows aren't the only ones able to read sign. I think we'll have a look at it for ourselves. Say, would you, stranger? And let us know if you found out anything? Of course. Ready, Kimasabi? Uh, Come on, Get him up, Scout. Uh, 
An hour later. Oh, 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 oh boy. Oh, Here's where the fence was cut. Uh, this story hasn't been hard to read, Kimosabe. Oh, it's easy. Those fellas cut the fence themselves. They herded those steers into the grove. Dismounted long enough to put ropes around their necks, making it appear they'd been tied, then headed for Reynolds' cabin. I forgot that anyone reading the sign correctly would see that the prints made by their horses were made at the same time as those left by the steers. That right. And not a single tree in the grove showed where a rope had been tied around it. Can you imagine those steers attempting to pull loose and still not cutting into the bark? Hmm. Them heap foolish. And up to some game we're looking into. Well, what do now? We promised Dan a report, and he's getting it. Come on. Get him up, Scott. Come on. Almost a week passed. One evening, Frank Salem finished his supper, pushed his plate aside, and... Yeah, uh-huh. Well, I'll clear off the table. Hey, then. Wait a minute, Granny. Yes? I want to talk to you. There's things that got to be decided on. By you? By both of us. Well, now, Frank, that's right kind of you. I've been thinking lately I weren't really needed around here, seeing as how you've been taking so much on yourself. So we're to decide something, huh? Well, just what? Well, you needn't talk that way to me. If I was younger, I wouldn't. I'd spank you instead. Now, get on with it. What's threatening you? It's Reynolds and them settlers just whole land to. Hmm. You're going to do something about them, ain't you? You don't mean to just stand by while they'll rob you blind, do you? I've been giving that quite a bit of thought. Well? If they are stealing, then, of course, it'll have to be stopped. <laughs> well, I should think so. But it ain't easy to believe. I'd never have sold to them if I hadn't figured they was honest. And once I make up my mind about folks, it takes a heap to change it. Why, well, you sure ain't doubting they've robbed us, are you? How about them steers I found on Reynolds' place just a week ago? How about that bunch of yearlings we found behind the Lathrop place just the day before yesterday? And yesterday again? I know, I know. Well, then? Uh, I think maybe tomorrow you better ask Dan Reynolds to drop over here. Don't tell him why. Just say I'd like to have a talk with him. I suppose I better see what he's got to say. I wouldn't. You know what I'd do if I was you? Gr- oh, who's that? Why don't you tell him to come in and find out? Come in. There, there, Master. Dan Reynolds. What well, the hell? Have you got to believe me? I swear I know. We've listened to your blasted lies all the way here and we're sick of it. What's this all about? Just what do you mean by dragging Mr. Reynolds in here like this? Ma'am, the dirty sneak was butchering one of your steers. We caught him in the air. It ain't so. Miss Salem, the reason they caught me by that steer was I heard a shot and went over to see what had happened. It was a steer that had been shot. And I was standing there wondering who'd done it when these fellas rode up and grabbed me. But it wasn't me that shot it. Honest, it wasn't. Didn't I tell you to shut up? Ma'am, don't you believe anything he says? He's lying to you. Slim and me not only seen him shoot the critter, but when we rode up, he already had his knife out ready to skin it. So we picked him up and brought him here. You can do with him what you want. Mm. <laughs> Didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you all along what the skunk was doing? And the rest of them settlers are doing the same thing. Quiet. Then, uh, I'm sorry about this. Me and Frank just been talking about you. I told Frank I didn't believe you'd done what he'd been accusing Miss Salem, as sure as I'm a foot high, I've been framed. Uh, if my boys hadn't caught you in the act, maybe I would have believed but you. But you must But believe. as it is, I reckon I've been wrong about you and your friends from the first. It pains me to say it, but I must have been. Listen, we... No, talking won't do you no good. It's too late for that. But if it's jail you're worrying about, you needn't. I don't aim to advertise what a soft-hearted idiot I've been by taking this to court. Uh, someday you'll see you're wrong about this, Abby. You won't go to jail. But the first thing in the morning, my men leave here with orders to see that neither you nor any of your neighbors gets water from Jones Creek. They'll have orders to shoot the first one of you that goes near it on sight. We've got to have water. Right now we need it more than ever. You heard what I said. It'll ruin us. But you brought it on yourself. Oh, we must have. Not another word, Dan. It'd just be a waste of breath. I've said it and I stand by it. Boys, turn Dan loose. He's free to go home. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger, who had overheard old Abby's decision, returned to his secret camp. Tonto was waiting for him, and... Aye! Aye, he must have me! Oh, oh, Silver! Oh, fella! Oh! Where you go? I've been at the Salem place. Oh. Dan Reynolds was just brought there, accused of butchering one of their steers. Abby refused to prosecute, but she's also refused to let the settlers continue to get water from Jones Creek for their farms. Mm, that's bad. Nevertheless, Tonto, I believe Abby's sincere. I doubt that she'd do a thing like this just to get that property back before the settlers can make the final payment on it. Uh, she honestly believes that Reynolds and the others have been stealing from her. Oh, uh, them not steal? Well, this is Frank's doing. That's right. And if he's engineered this, it can be for only one reason. Undoubtedly, Mason is trying not only to defraud the settlers, but his employer, Caleb Chandler, as well. He very likely hopes to get the land for a fraction of what he was authorized to pay, then pocket the difference after he's paid off Frank. Oh. Uh. I think you'd better get ready for a trip, Kimosabe. Where me go? To Caleb's place. Shouldn't take but a few days if you keep going. Uh Uh-huh. I think Caleb will remember you. If he doesn't, it won't be difficult for you to identify yourself. Then then what do? Then bring Caleb back here with you. Tell him what we suspect is going on, and I doubt you'll have trouble. He'll most likely be as anxious to come as we are to have him. Me go now? At once. Here, Scout! I'll give you a hand with the saddle. The sooner you get started, the sooner you'll be back. The following day, the yard in front of Dan Reynolds' cabin was a gathering place for his angry neighbors. Each of the men present carried a weapon in some shape or form. The women, although unarmed, were as indignant as their husbands and fathers. They filled in the ditches! Ain't a drop of water coming through from the creek. They think we're just going to stand by while our crops go to blazes? They're local if they do. But, Paul, look along the bank. You can see Abby's men guarding the creek. They want you to do something. I think they want to fight. And we'll give it to them. Well, you're going to stand here talking about it all day, or are we going to do something? This ain't getting us no place. Let's get to our horses and ride over there. I'm ready to rest. If the rest of you are... Hey, come on. Well, I'll be blasted. Look at there. One of them's got the nerve to ride right over here. Well, I'll come get on. him. Watch out. Doggone it, Dan. Why'd you have to go and shove my arm and spile my aim? But that's a mask, fella. He ain't on their side. He's done me one good turn already. Fellas, put up your gun. Who in thunder is he? That's sure some horse he's riding. Look at it come. You say you met him before, Dan? I sure did. Hi there. Hello, Dan. Oh, 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 Stranger, what are you doing? I see you and your friends are getting ready to fight this out. You bet we are, mister. Dan. Yeah? I believe you know Grandma Salem better than any of your neighbors do. Do you believe she's done this for her own profit? It's a chance to keep what we paid her and still sell to that Mason fellow, ain't it? You haven't answered my question. I want to know if you believe Abby honest or dishonest. Well, I... I don't know. Stop and look at this from her point of view. You and your friends are comparative strangers to her. You know that you're not to blame for this trouble, and so do I. But how is she to know it? What reason is she to take your word on this against that of her grandson and the men who work for her? Well... None, I suppose, but just the but same... But just the same, you mean to make a fight of it, huh? Well, if you do, you'll know you've been in a fight. Some of you may be killed. Those fellows keeping watch at the creek mean business. That creek is on Abby's property. She has the right to keep trespassers from it if she chooses. If her men kill, they'll simply be defending the right of their employer. If you kill, however, the law will see it as murder. I suppose you've got a better idea. I have, if you listen. I don't know what it could be. Put down those arms, as I've told you, and I'll explain it. We might as well, folks. Listening don't mean we can't decide for ourselves afterwards. That's better. Now then, what's on your mind? Then, you and every one of you are going to do just exactly as Frank Salem hoped for. You're going to abandon your farms. first surprise and anger of the settlers at the Lone Ranger's proposal disappeared as the masked man went on to explain his plan in detail. Three days passed. Then late one afternoon, Frank Salem burst into the cafe in town, looked swiftly about, and headed for the table where Mason sat alone. Mason! Huh? Oh, you, huh, Frank? Sit down. Name your pies. (laughs) We ain't got time for a drink, huh? What's up? Mason? We've done it. <laughs> you mean? <laughs> they cleared out. The settlers, lock, stock, and barrel. Every last one of them. Oh, you're fooling. You think so? Then just get on your horse and ride over toward the valley. 
There ain't no one of them left. They loaded up their wagons and pulled out. Well, I'll be doggone. They had to do it. They was licked and they knew it. Without water from the creek, they couldn't raise so much as a measly crop of weeds. They just had one choice, and that was to get while the getting was good. Then you think that, that Grandma will sell to you? Sure she will. Why shouldn't she? <laughs> right now she's mad enough to sell to anybody at their own price. Well, then let's get going. Hey, not so fast. Huh? How about the cash you promised me? I've done my part. Now, when do I get paid off? I told you you'd get half of the difference between what I'll have to pay your grandma and what Caleb figured I'd have to pay, didn't I? Yeah, but then I... Then how'll I know what you got coming till I find out what your grandma's gonna ask? Come on. Uh, you don't need to worry. You'll get cash on the barrel head right after this deal goes through. Abby Salem made no further protests when Mason offered to buy the land. She accepted the price he suggested, and the deal completed, Mason and Frank left the ranch. Half an hour later. Slim. Yes, sir. You figure I done right to sell that fella. Why, I don't see why you shouldn't have, ma'am. As long as them settlers cleared out and you ain't got no use for the land, somebody might as well have it. I suppose so. What do you think of Mason? Me? Yes, you. Why, uh, why, I'd say he seemed to be real fair-spoken. <laughs> I didn't like him at all. Sneaky-looking, that's what he was. I don't know what Frank seen in the fella. Seems anxious enough to go someplace with him, though. Yes, sir. Collars. See who it is. Yes, sir. Uh, even, Miss Salem. Dan Reynolds. I thought you and your thieving friends cleared out. No, nope. we changed our minds. Decided we weren't leaving after all. Water or no water? Huh? Yeah, so here we are with the cash to make the last payment on what we owe you. Then we'll have full title. But, but you cleared out and I've already sold that property. I Didn't thought you... Didn't you get kind of ahead of yourself, ma'am? But you... We got it right down in writing that we have till the first of the month to make this payment. It ain't the first yet, so you never had the right to sell to nobody else. But... But you're gone. You're taking your things. The cabins were empty. We all... You denying that we can keep that land if we're a mind to? Well, no, Then but there's you... nothing more to discuss. Here's the cash. Some's in gold and some's in folding money. But you'll find it's all there to the penny. What you tell the fellow you sold to is your business. Slim. Yes, sir. Find that Mason fellow. Get Frank. Hurry up and see where they went. They got to be brought right back. Yes, sir. Hurry. Stay where you are, Slim. There's the fellows you want right here. That'll bring them along. Uh, Let go. What's the idea of grabbing us like this? You can't. Quiet. Ranger, who are you? What are you and the engine doing here? And who's this fellow with you? This is Caleb Chandler. Who I am doesn't matter. Chandler? Where have I heard your name before? Mason was representing me when he bought the land off you. Our land. That'll be settled later, Dan. There's something more important to settle here first. What do you want? Abby, you blame the settlers for the troubles here. You were convinced they'd been stealing from you. For that reason, you denied them water from the creek for their land. And even if that land still does belong to them, they'll never get one drop of water off of my place. What I said afore still stands. Even if it were proven to you they were not to blame? Huh? Don't listen to them, Grandma. Of course they stole our beef. Won't it proved a dozen times over? They can't come Frank, in for... you'll keep still. Abby, I believe Caleb has a question to ask you. Well? Uh, Miss Salem, I just want to know one thing. How much did Mason pay you for that land this evening? One thousand dollars. That doesn't agree with what you told Mr. Chandler outside, Mason. I, uh... What's I... this all about? Miss Salem, you tell me he paid you a thousand. Outside, he told me he'd paid two thousand. Now, I'd give a lot to know just where that extra thousand went to. Well, I, uh... One moment. Uh... Abby, huh? as I said before, you blamed the settlers. But as a matter of fact, every bit of evidence against them was reported to you either by your grandson or by the two men of your crew who were his special friends. But what I'll show it? you why. Look here, you can't bully me. Grandma, tell him to Search stop him, it. Search him, Ah, me, search him. Get away. Get me fear. What are you doing, your friend? He won't be harmed. Uh, you'll learn in a moment. Find it, Tonto. Uh, here. Here, cash. Good. Take it, Abby. Count it. And suppose you ask Frank where he got that much money. Five hundred dollars. Tell your grandmother what you did to earn it, young fellow. You go to blazes. Frank. Well? You you never had anywhere near that much cash all to once in all your life. Frank, where'd you get it? That's my business. It isn't necessary for you to tell us. Search Mason, and you'll find another five hundred dollars. Add both together, and you get a thousand. 
The exact difference between what Mason paid you, Abby, and what he told Caleb he paid. Frank, what did you do to earn that much cash? Why would Mr. Mason have given you any such money as that? I won't answer. I don't have to answer anything. No. No, I reckon you don't. This don't need answering. Frank, you've made me more ashamed than I've ever been afore in all my life. Dan, I... I've got to apologize. I hope you and the others don't think I had any part in this scheme. Why, of course we don't. Sharks, no, ma'am. The masked fellow convinced us of that. Yeah. Caleb. Yeah? I've already told Dan and the others that land at the head of the valley isn't going to be what they want for farming. The land belongs to them, but I have an idea you'll be able to come to terms with them. Is that so, men? You want to buy us out? When I sent Mason here, I figured on that land costing me 2000 well, that figure still stands. 2000 for the land the minute you say it's mine. And I reckon we'll take you up on it. It still gives us a clear profit so as we can get another start. And I've been paid in full twice over. Mr. Chandler, I'll give you back the 1000 Mason paid me right now. Thank you, ma'am. But what's to be done with these two skunks? I'll take care of that. Abby? Yes? You wouldn't prosecute us when you figured we was in the wrong, so we won't turn Frank over to the law. <laughs> I reckon you're still handy enough to deal with them in your own way. I will. <laughs> and as for you, Mason, I got my cash back, so I reckon you can go free, too. But you're fired. And I'll see to it you don't never get another job in this year's state. Well, that settles that. Folks, it seems to me that one fellow deserves a heap of thanks for the way things turned out. And that's the masked man. <laughs> just heard as a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.